This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Life comes with a lot of decisions and sometimes it's hard to know which path is right. Therapy gives you a place to map out your options so you can trust your choices and get excited about the future. Visit betterhelp.com super to give it a try. You know, the more I think about it, the more I don't think Grindelwald was ever the master of the Elder Wand. Hey brother. Guys, over the years we've taken a stab or nine at how the Elder Wand works, who was the master when, or just what it means to be the master. Like, is Harry right when he says he became the master after Draco? Was Draco ever the master? According to the story as we know it, the current path is as follows. Grindelwald steals the wand from the wand maker Gregorovich and apparently becomes the master. From there, Grindelwald is defeated by Albus Dumbledore, who goes on to become the master for the next 50 years or so, until Draco Malfoy lures him to the top of the astronomy tower at Hogwarts where he attempts to kill him but only succeeds in disarming him but apparently also becomes the master in doing so. Then when Harry, Ron, and Hermione are captured and taken to Malfoy Manor, Harry takes Draco's actual wand from his hand and escapes, apparently signaling to the Elder Wand, which is presently buried in a tomb at Hogwarts, that its new master has been defeated and that now Harry is the master. And then, while pledged to Harry, it will not properly work against him, so when Voldemort tries to cast a a cadaver Adam, it backfires and sends itself to Harry, finally uniting it with its true master. It's quite the story, and when Harry pieces it all together for you at the end of Deathly Hallows, I remember thinking how perfectly elegant it all was. But I have to say, in retrospect, there are just a few, just a few gaping holes in this story. Like, how did Grigorovich get the wand to begin with? And why did Grindelwald stealing it from him constitute him becoming the master? And if Grindelwald wasn't the master, then why would Dumbledore beating Grindelwald make Dumbledore the master? But then if Grindelwald was the master, then how did Dumbledore beat him? And why, oh why, does Harry not magically taking a different wand from Draco constitute a change in mastership of the Elder Wand, which isn't even present? Yeah, that's very vague and not helpful, but today we get to the bottom of all of it. The Elder Wand is considered the most powerful wand in the history of the wizarding world, a wand that must always win duels for its owner, and yet it keeps changing hands a lot, doesn't it? And I'll be honest, I've never been too sure what it means when they say one wand is just more powerful than another. Like, doesn't it mostly come down to the wizard or the spell being used? Like, for example, Avada Kedavra is supposed to be an unblockable curse, so if you have the Elder Wand and someone casts Avada Kedavra at you, if you cast a shield charm, it's still not gonna block it, right? If you transfigure a pig into a table with a regular wand versus the elder wand, is that pig more of a pig with the elder wand? Or does that mean that the transfiguration itself was just more likely to succeed? And perhaps more importantly, if you burned that table, would it smell like bacon? These are the things that keep me up at night. But like, if you know what you're doing, shouldn't it not matter? And if you don't know what you're doing, then how is the wand gonna help? I have rabbit. Harping home. Turn this water into rum. The power level of any wand seems like it has way more to do with the caster than the wand itself. Even Voldemort remarks, Wondering. Wondering why the Elder Wand refuses to be what it ought to be, refuses to perform as legend says it must perform for its rightful owner, and I think I have the answer. I actually really like how the movie phrases this when Snape tells Voldemort, My lord, you have performed extraordinary magic with this wand in the past hour. And Voldemort responds, No, I am extraordinary, but the wand resist me. Indeed, the Elder Wand has accomplished many great things, but I think that's because it attracts powerful wizards to begin with. You know, those who are terrible. Green. Further proof that the wand isn't what legend says it is, is the fact that it's lost twice that we know of. Once for Grindelwald against Dumbledore, and again for Voldemort against Harry. And what's interesting there is that in those situations, Grindelwald is believed to have been a master, while Voldemort is not, and yet the outcome is the same. Master or not, they still lose. But also worth noting that in those situations, the victors, Harry and Dumbledore, are confirmed masters of the Elder Wand. But you might be wondering, 
What do I mean by that? Well, of all the magic the Elder Wand doesn't live up to, there is one feat we know it can do that other wands cannot, and that is mend broken wands. After Harry visits Godric's Hollow and Nagini, <coughs> Hermione, breaks Harry's wand, Ollivander tells him, I'm sorry, very sorry, but a wand that has suffered this degree of damage cannot be repaired by any means that I know of. And like, not for nothing here, but Ollivander and his family have been creating and studying wands since 382 BCE. That is a staggering 2,380 years worth of wand crafting expertise. And yet, post Battle of Hogwarts, now armed with the Elder Wand, Harry is in fact able to mend the broken Holly Wand. And Dumbledore is all but confirmed to have accomplished this exact same feat, not repairing his own wand, but repairing Hagrid's. <laughs> You've heard of it. It is often referenced that the broken pieces of Hagrid's wand are concealed within his flowery pink umbrella. And yet, if they are truly still broken, then there is no way the umbrella should work at all except as an umbrella. Because I mean, first of all, what would be the point in snapping somebody's wand if they could just fit them back together and make it keep working? Although I guess for that matter, why do they even give them back the pieces at all? But you know what, for that matter, why don't they snap the wands of the Death Eaters who escaped from Azkaban? Like they get their original wands back, what is going on? And, and, and isn't it the mistaken snapping of Harry's own wand that renders it useless? Like how is Hagrid able to use a wand that's broken inside of an umbrella if it hasn't been fixed? But the point is, the umbrella does work and thus the wand has to have been repaired and it just so happens that Hagrid is one of Dumbledore's favorite people and Dumbledore has the Elder Wand. All right guys, and now we need a quick break to mention today's sponsor, BetterHelp. Have you ever had a time in your life where you felt like your brain got in the way of something important? Oh wait, I know the answer to that one. Go ahead. Yes. Yeah, he gets it. Talking like an honorary Ben, ben point? Yeah. Ding. Well, it's because we're human beings and sometimes your brain just gets muddled. Like maybe you knew you should have done something, but you didn't. Or maybe you shouldn't have done something, but you did. I've been there too. Well, therapy helps you figure out what's holding you back or maybe not holding you back. So you can work for yourself and not against yourself. I've personally benefited a lot from therapy in this way where it just helps reframe these problems and lets the muddled brain space clear up a bit. But there's so many other benefits as well. Like maybe it's not just your brain being muddled. Maybe it's helping you recognize that, hey, you actually are on a really successful streak right now. Or maybe it can help you set boundaries in your relationships. If you've ever thought about starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's designed to be really convenient and flexible and suited to you, and it's all online. All you do is fill out a brief questionnaire, and then you get matched with a licensed therapist. And if you don't like them, you can switch to a new therapist at no charge at any time. So make your brain your friend with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com super to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash super, link in the description down below. So boom, we have two confirmed masters of the Elder Wand who are capable of making it perform extraordinary magic. And if they are truly the only masters that we know of, then it explains why Grindelwald loses to Dumbledore in their big duel. I mean, Dumbledore even admits to Harry in King's Cross that he thinks maybe he was a little bit better. I knew that we were evenly matched. Perhaps that I was a shade more skillful. Now, perhaps Dumbledore is just being humble here, but if you're just a shade better, then shouldn't the most powerful wand in the history of the world give Grindelwald more than a shade of an edge? against Dumbledore, and yet he loses because he wasn't the master, which is perfectly believable if you ask me, because all he does is like steal it from Grigorovich's shop. According to Harry, he read Grigorovich's mind, and I saw this young bloke perched on a windowsill, and he fired a curse at Grigorovich and jumped out of sight. He stole it. He stole whatever you know who's after. Yes, I guess Grindelwald fires a curse at Grigorovich, but not to take the wand. And if Grigorovich was the master, then shouldn't the wand not have worked against him? Or maybe the allegiance changed the moment Grindelwald picked it up? I mean, if you ask me, that doesn't really track because he's not taking it by force. But honestly, I don't think it matters because what would have made Grigorovich the master of the Elder Wand rather than just its owner? The truth is, I think we fundamentally think about mastership of the Elder Wand incorrectly. We imagine it as if there must always be a continuous, unbroken chain of masters. That the only time someone stops being a master is because the allegiance shifts. But what if the Elder Wand doesn't 
always have to have a master? What if it's not a matter of winning its allegiance, but that only certain people are even capable of being the master? But I am the chosen one. In other words, it's not about being cunning enough to acquire it from its previous owner. It's about being a more quality person to begin with. It's kind of like Mjolnir, like the wand only truly works for worthy people. And once you start thinking about it like this, a lot of things really start clicking into place. Because then, of course, only Harry and Dumbledore are worthy enough to truly be masters of the Elder Wand. Dumbledore is knelt to by a chillin' whose big power is its ability to look into your soul and determine whether or not you are pure of heart. And conveniently for us, Grindelwald is present when this happens, so we can confirm it would not kneel for him, proving his non-worthiness and really helping our case that he was never a master of the Elder Wand. There's also just no doubt in my mind that a chillin would have knelt for Harry if not called like all of its cousins and extended family and invited them to do the same because Harry's just sort of a boss like that. You know, what with being the chosen one and the master of death and coming back to life. And he's got a very good rest. I don't think I have to sell you on Harry though. Speaking of death though, I feel like this explanation plays very nicely into death's plan with the Hallows to reclaim the brothers who eluded him. But death was cunning. He pretended to congratulate the three brothers upon their magic and said that each of them had earned a prize for having been clever enough to evade him. So the oldest brother, who is a combative man, asked for a wand more powerful than any in existence, a wand that must always win duels for its owner, a wand worthy of a wizard who had conquered death. I mean, it's right there, isn't it? A wand worthy of a wizard who would conquer death. But even inside that moment, death is not conquered. He is actively tricking the first brother. That's like, yeah, sure, here you go. Here's a wand that meets all of those criteria you just said. You don't meet those criteria, but you're welcome to take it. And sure enough, the first brother dies like one night later because Antioch was never the master of the Elder Wand. Nonetheless, the wand goes on to perpetuate its own reputation because it is believed to be so powerful. Thus, it attracts powerful people who go on to do great and or terrible things, but not because the wand is great, just because they themselves are magically powerful. It's honestly a lot like the trick with the stone in the mirror. Only someone who wanted to find the stone, find it, but not use it, could get it. Dumbledore even brings up this point with Harry. In spite of all the temptation you have endured, all of the suffering, you remain pure of heart, just as pure as you were at the age of 11, when you stared into a mirror that reflected your heart's desire. Have you have any idea how few wizards could have seen what you saw in that mirror? I love how Dumbledore is simultaneously like scolding Harry and telling him how great he is in that same scene. We of course know what Harry sees in the mirror is his parents, and as of Crimes of Grindelwald, we also know what Dumbledore sees in the mirror. Grindelwald. I'd say Harry's is a bit more pure, but in both cases, what their heart's desire is, is love. So really, the Elder Wand is kind of a paradox. Only those who don't want power could ever truly be the master of it, but only those who want power ever find it. And as ever, Dumbledore is locked and loaded with yet another quote for this. I had proven as a very young man that power was my weakness and my temptation. It is a curious thing, Harry, but perhaps those who are best suited to power are those who have never sought it. Yes, I know Dumbledore is saying that he sought power. The point here is that Dumbledore is being extremely humble. But so why did Grindelwald lose to Dumbledore despite having the wand? Because he was never truly the master and he was against someone who was. Voldemort is able to successfully hit Harry with the Vada Kedavra in the woods, but only because Harry's already the master and that is his intent. So the wand lets it happen. But I should have died. I didn't defend myself. I meant to let him kill me. And that, said Dumbledore, will I think have made all the difference. However, when Harry comes back for the final duel, he no longer intends to die, and so the wand backfires and kills Voldemort. And the hilarious thing to me here is that if this is true, then all of Harry's math he does at the end to deduct that he is the true master of the Elder Wand is wrong. Like, he did all of the wrong reasoning, but got to the correct answer anyway. It's because I stole that wand from Draco! No, Harry, you're just worthy. It's fine. We're good. Honestly, it speaks to Harry's humbleness that he can't just accept that he's worthy. He needs some convoluted plan for it to have all worked out in his favor after he came back to life. And then also, in case you're wondering, in the meantime, I don't think Draco was ever a master of the wand at all. Thanks for watching.
If you haven't heard, we've recently launched a brand new Harry Potter podcast where we are doing a chapter by chapter discussion of the entire Harry Potter book series. It comes out every Sunday, wherever pods are cast. We are having so much fun with it. And you can catch up real easy. We're only like five chapters in at this point. So if you wanna check that out, click right over here. But otherwise, Ben, until next time, I will see you in another life, brother.